Welcome to Body Brain Breath. My name is David Lobenstein, and this is my collection of tips and techniques to make you a happier and more effective therapist. I want to talk about a boring topic, and that topic is how do you communicate with your clients between sessions? It's kind of boring, right? But I think it is really important to our happiness and our longevity as therapists. Okay, if you uh, work for a spa, if someone else books your appointments, if you don't have communication with your clients um, outside of the treatment room, then you don't need to worry about this. But for all those of you who see clients on your own, who have a private practice, who see occasional clients in your house, however it works, I think that this is going to resonate with you. Right? We live in a crazy age where people expect to be able to be in contact all of the time. And you know, I guess that's cool if you're like stalking your ex or if you like have a teenager and you need to figure out if they got on the bus to come home or you know, all that jazz, but I do not think it's good for our therapeutic relationships with our clients because that always on mentality, it means they think they always have access to us. And frankly, it means that they are less likely to figure out ways of taking care of themselves. And I think ultimately as therapists, our greatest job can be to make our clients more self-sufficient, to make our clients realize that they have the tools that they need. Yes, we can help them. There's lots of stuff we can do, right? But the way we really help them is on the table in the treatment room. It's not texting and emailing in between sessions. So here is my rule of thumb. I keep communication to a minimum in between sessions. What that means first is I do everything possible not to text with my clients. I try to have all my conversations either over the phone, if that's what the client prefers, or over email, which is what I prefer. My concern about texting is that it is the epitome of our always on sensibility that we have these days, right? When we text someone, we think that they're going to read it right away and then even worse, get back to us right away. I want to get out of that idea. I don't want my clients to have that impression of me at all because I don't want to be beholden to them. So if a client texts me with something quick, then I answer it, done. But if it's an ongoing issue, then I just say very clearly, I'm gonna move this conversation over to email because I find that's more effective for me in terms of keeping track of my communication with clients. That's it. It can be very simple. It can be a logistical reason, okay? But it means that they're not feeling like they can text me and then just sit waiting for an answer. Okay? Because again, I want to build my client's own sense of self-sufficiency. Then rule number two is when we are on email, I only respond during regular business hours. That means I don't respond on Sundays ever, ever, ever to clients. I respond Saturdays, maybe in the morning if my kids are busy and I have a little bit of time to catch up on, on email. And then during the week, I only respond um, uh, early mornings if I get up before my kids do and I can check in on things, or then during the kind of normal, normal working day, nine to five-ish. This is very important because again, I don't want my clients to feel like they can always reach me. I don't think that does anything good for them, okay? So Gmail, uh, which is the email provider that I use, has a beautiful snooze feature, 
right? So it means you can get an email to disappear and then pop back up into your inbox the next morning. I use that all the time. Anytime a client um, gets in touch with me late at night or even just when I'm busy with other clients and I don't wanna have their email on my brain, I use the snooze feature, have it disappear until the next morning, and then I answer it then. It means that I can be very clear about my own boundaries, right? Without even saying anything to the clients, I'm not telling them when I'm responding, I'm just setting a pattern, right? I'm very good about getting back to people as soon as possible, but only within the time frame that I set. So, once again, try to keep texts to a minimum or non-existent, and then email only within the parameters that you feel comfortable with. And I have a feeling that over time, that clear boundary of client communication does a lot of good for us. And just as important, it does a lot of good for our clients. So now I wanna hear from you. Tell me what you thought in the comments section below. Like or subscribe if you are so inclined and join my uh, newsletter if you haven't already at bodybrainbreath.com. Thanks so much.